Hello, I'm Mukala Kabongo, and on this edition of the LCTV News, school mandate, school mask requirement extended, Lynn Public Schools COVID numbers, Grand Army of the Republic open house, and more. On the Lynn Note Down, we talked with Megan Gonzalez and Erica Baker of the Flax Pond Association. Here's this week's LCTV News for Friday, October 1st, 2021. This episode of the LCTV News is brought to you by Columbia Insurance Agency. Serving the Lynn community for over 60 years with home, auto, and business insurance. The elementary and secondary commissioner notified school districts this week that the mask requirements for all public K-12 students, educators, and staff will be extended until November 1st. For middle and high schools, if 80% of their students and staff are vaccinated, then they will have the option to lift the mandate by submitting an attestation form to the department by October 15th. Schools that have collected proof of vaccination and meets the 80% threshold may submit the form for consideration before October 15th. Students and staff will not be required to wear masks once their school completes the verification process. During Tuesday's City Council's Public Property and Parks Committee meeting, the committee voted unanimously to put together a request for a proposal for the lease or purchase of a property for a new senior center. The, new, the City Council also unanimously voted to approve the motion. This will be the City's third request for proposal for a new senior center. James Lamont, as the City's solicitor, requested the committee authorize a request for a proposal for a 10-year lease or purchase a property suitable to fit the needs of the senior center. With this request for proposal approved, the City Council, the Council on Aging, along with the Mayor's Office, now have the opportunity to evaluate a variety of scenarios that would be beneficial for the city. To watch the full City Council meeting, visit lintv.org. Earlier this week, a Lynn man has been, was indicted on firearms offense. Jerfondi Montano is facing indictments in dealing firearms without a license, being, a, being in possession of a firearm and ammunition as a felon, and possession of an unregistered firearm. Montano is facing up to five years in prison, three years of supervised release, and a fine of $250,000 for dealing firearms without a license. He also faces up to 10 years in prison, three years of supervised release, and a fine of $250,000 for, for charges of being a felon in possession of a firearm. Along with that, he also faces 10 years in prison, three years of supervised release, and a fine of $250,000 for charges of possession of an unregistered firearm. Lynn police say an elder, elderly man was struck by a truck earlier Wednesday morning on Lynn Shore Drive. The man who was yet to be identified was taken to Mass General Hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. The crash remains under investigation. Yesterday, the City of Lynn's Director of Elder Services held a fall festival for Lynn elders at the Old Time Italian Cuisine, and LCTV was in attendance. My name is Chris Gomez. I'm the Director of Elder Services for the City of Lynn. And we're doing events so the seniors of Lincoln know what services and stuff is really out there for them. You know, a lot of times they miss out on things, so we want to make an event that they can see everything that's, that's available to them. So yeah, that's pretty much what the event is for. As well as so they can get together and congregate a little bit, you know. Senior isolation is a big problem, so anytime we can do an event, they can get together in a safe manner. 
We're trying to do it. This is the, um, I did a July 4th cookout. It was a big hit at the YMCA. And then this is just another event. It's not annual. This is the first of its kind. On Tuesday evening, the Lynn Teachers Union held a candidate forum at Breed Middle School featuring mayoral candidates and school committee candidates. And LCTV was present. I mean, you know, I, I live off Eastern Half. Whenever I'm going toward Salem, on my way toward Salem, I have to pull over every few minutes because an ambulance is trying to get through. I'd hate to be the person in that ambulance. Insurance is really important. And I will do everything I can to keep our benefits and our insurance coverage at the highest it can possibly be. Thank you. Thank you, Candace here. Candace Nicholson. Thank you. Uh, we're in a much better position on health care than we were uh, a few years ago, and, and that was uh, a really productive advancement for the city. And we can thank the, the unions who are at the table who, who were willing to uh, negotiate to, to save this, the city from a bad spot, and we're in a much better position than we were uh, overall financially and also in the, in the finances of our health care. Uh, and so we should absolutely plan uh, to, to make sure that we sort of uh, stay in a strong position, but also maintain the coverage that we have. Uh, because we, we know uh, what costs are doing, and we, we should have the ability to, to be able to do that and, and maintain the, the coverage that we have now. Um, I, I, so, you know, that, 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 that's the plan, to continue to have an ongoing negotiation, recognizing the, 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 the progress that we've made and trying to preserve that, but also uh, be really mindful of the, the, the impact that it has on our employees and their families. To watch the full form, visit lintv.org. LCTV was on location at the Grand Army of Republic Museum Saturday for their open house. Here's more from the open house. Welcome to the Grand Army of the Republic Hall and Museum here in Lynn, Massachusetts. Hello, my name is Wendy Joseph. I'm the curator of the Grand Army of the Republic. Right now, we have an open house after a big redo of all of the exhibits that haven't been changed a long, long time. And we have a lot of people who haven't been here since they were kids. We have people that still uh, say, they, say that this is the first time they even knew about this building, which is a great part of the history of Lynn and it's a jewel of the city. This past Saturday, the D-Max Family YMCA stride along the tide returned to Nahant and LCTV was on hand. Runners came together in the hunt over the weekend for the annual Stride Along the Tide 5K. It's really great to see people back together, gathering, running, you know, really pursuing health. But this is a fun day and it, you know, another example of the YMCA's recovery after COVID-19. We are scheduled for about 200 runners today. That was registered. So we're probably going to see about 225. The race was an opportunity for YMCA staff to reconnect with community members and also to raise funds. Any opportunity for me to um, set an example, right, you know, and, and get out there and participate and talk to members, I'm here, so. People who want to come out and support the Lynn community, they come to the road race, that those funds go right back in so we can give it right back out to, the, to people in, our, in the Lynn community. With COVID-19 and the Delta variant still being a threat, Organizers took all precautions to ensure the safety of the runners. So the biggest thing obviously was the Delta variant. We weren't sure what was going to happen, but we decided that we were going to go 
go forward with it with our race series. Um, so we probably started planning about three or four months ago to make sure that everything was secured and ready to go. We're, we're an organization based on caring, respect, responsibility, and honesty. So we're asking people if they're not vaxxed to keep a mask on at all times um, and, and, and be respectful of everybody. This 5K is just one of many efforts by community leaders to promote health and wellness. One thing that we learned the last 20 months is there's a huge um, disparity in health, right? And how important it is to be healthy or the best that you can be. And I'm hoping that people really don't take health for granted. We're excited. We're excited to be back and in person. We're excited to be back. We're excited to be raising money to support the community. And we're just excited to be here in the Hunt because they're a great partner to the Y. For LCTV, I'm Mukala Kabongo. And now for the sports update. Kemp Academy moved to 4 0 on the season after last night's 49 40 victory over Whittier Tech. Panthers quarterback Juan Setel Singh had an outstanding game as he totaled five touchdowns, four in the air and one on the ground. The Panthers will look to go 5-0 next week when they take on Manchester Essex. Lynn English boys soccer team won a wild one Tuesday night against rival Lynn Classical at Manning Field. In what was a defensive battle, it will be the Bulldogs who would break the scoreless matchup in the 75th minute when Eddie Romero knocked one in to give the Bulldogs the 1-0 lead. And that will be all English needed to escape with the victory. The Bulldogs will take on Chelsea today at Manning Field. Lynn Classical was able to bounce back against Somerville last night. The Rams came out with the 2-0 victory to move to 4-4-1 on the season. Gabriel Sarmanto and Imara Barrios each scored for the Rams. The Rams are back in action tomorrow as they travel to Peabody. On the girls' side, the Lady Rams blanked the Lady Bulldogs to go 6-0 to continue their hot start to the season. Lauren Wilson had a hat trick for the Lady Rams with her three goals. Delaney Donna and Jada Mateo each had one goal in the matchup. The Lady Rams followed their victory over Lynn English with the 3-0 shutout of undefeated Somerville. Lynn Classical got goals from Lauren Wilson, Delaney Dana, and Ava Carrenti. The Lady Rams are back on the road Tuesday when they take on Chelsea. St. Mary's Lady Spartans are now 4-4-1 on the season after their 5-3 loss to Cardinal Spellman. It was a 3-3 tie. The Spartans will give up two late goals that will cost them the game. Sophie Skabikis scored all three goals for the Lady Spartans. St. Mary's is back on the field Wednesday when they take on Archbishop Williams. St. Mary's boys ended their matchup with Cardinal Spellman with a 0-0 draw. This was the Spartans' second straight draw this week. After Monday's 1-1 draw against Bishop Feehan, the Spartans are on the road today as they take on Essex Tech. St. Mary's football team remains undefeated as they went on the road last Friday and knocked off Bishop Feehan 28-14 to move to 3-0 on the season. David Brown Jr. led the way for the Spartans as he scored three rushing touchdowns. Brown has now totaled nine touchdowns on the season. The Spartans have a big matchup this week as they go on the road to take on rival Bishop Fenwick. Kickoff is set for 7 p.m. Len Classical moved to 2-1 on the season as they put up 53 points against Somerville. Quarterback Brian Vaughn Jr. threw for four touchdown passes. Muhammad Dale ran for 107 yards and two scores. The play of the game came from sophomore Marquise Avery. Avery returned to kick off 80 yards in the fourth quarter. The Rams are back on the road today as they take on Medford. Lynn English Bulldogs remain winless on the season as they were shut out 42 0 by Everett last Friday. The inexperience for the Bulldogs showed as the Crimson scored on their first four possessions. The Bulldogs will look to get in the win column tonight when they host Revere on senior night. Lynn Tech let one get away from them on Saturday in their 32-22 loss to Manchester Essex. After going up 16-7 after Michael Mambu's touchdown run, Manchester Essex would score 25 unanswered points to take a commanding lead. The Hornets would score on a 25-yard touchdown reception by Henry Thurlow, Thurlow followed by a 39-yard touchdown reception by A.J. Palazzola to make it 19-16. Palazzola would not be done as he returned a punt 52 yards to the end zone to make it 25-16 Hornets. 
after getting in the end zone to make it 22-32, Tech came inches from recovering an onside kick to make the game interesting. The Tigers will look to get in the, their first win of the season tonight as they travel to take on Georgetown. The Boston College Eagles remain undefeated on the season as they knocked off Missouri 41-34 in an overtime thriller Saturday afternoon. Running back Pat Garwolf III had a big day on the ground as he rushed for 175 yards and two touchdowns on 25 carries. Quarterback Dennis Grossell threw two touchdown, two, threw two touchdown passes for the Eagles. His, his second touchdown came in overtime when he found Zay Flowers for a 10-yard touchdown catch to put the Eagles up 41-34. It would be Brandon Sebastian who would come up with the big play as he came up with the game-winning interception to seal the victory for the Eagles. BC will look to go 5-0 this week as they take on Clemson in Death Valley. Kickoff is set for 7.30 p.m. The Boston Red Sox are now tied for the second AL wildcard spot after last night's 6-2 loss to the Baltimore Orioles. After going up 1-0 in the top of the first, after her, Eduardo Hernandez's home run, it would be all Orioles. In the, in the bottom of the third, Ryan Mountcastle hit a three-run homer to put the Orioles up 3-1. to one. The Orioles would add three more runs between the sixth and seventh innings to put the game away. With only three games remaining in the season, the Sox have to win out if they want to be part of the postseason. They'll have their opportunity tonight as they begin a three-game series with the Washington Nationals. First pitch is set for 7.05 p.m. The New England Patriots moved to 1-2 on the season after their 28-13 loss to the New Orleans Saints this past Saturday, Sunday. In the first quarter, the Saints would strike first as they went on an 11-play drive that was capped off by a Jameis Winston touchdown pass to Alvin Kamara to put the Saints up 7-0. After a Pats turnover, Winston would throw his second touchdown pass when he found Marquise Callaway in the back of the end zone to put the Saints up 14-0. The Saints would open the second half with a pick six by Malcolm Jenkins to go up 21-3. New England will look to bounce back Sunday night when they welcome back old friends Tom Brady and Rob Gronkowski to Gillette Stadium when they host the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. On this week's Lynn Lowdown, we spoke with the Flax Pond Association's Hello and welcome to another edition of the Lynn Lowdown. And today we have the Flax Pond Association here with us, Megan and Erica. How are you all doing? And a little sunny. guest too, and Sunny. <laughs> How are you, Sunny? I think he's good. Yeah, he's yeah. pretty yeah. good. Everyone's yeah, so doing good. Uh, sunny is, sunny yeah. is ready for the TV moment. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh man, so much to talk to you, uh, to you all about. Uh, just first of all, how's everything? How's the association going? You know, how's life kind of in the post-pandemic yeah. era? Um, it's going good. So we definitely, um, before pandemic, before COVID, through a wrench and everything, um, we were going strong. We had like a trivia night set up. Mm -hmm. We had cleanup set up, everything. Um, and then COVID hit. So we had to kind of take a back seat to everything. But just recently, we've had a few cleanups. Um, we've been getting back into meetings. We've been doing, oh, we're going to try to do some Zoom meetings. Mm -hmm. um, so slowly but surely, we've been coming back, which yeah. is nice. Did COVID, did COVID help, help you all plan a little more for future cleanups? Because, you know, there was that time you got, you all can't really be at the pond and see what's going on. But with, with COVID hitting, did that kind of help you guys? look at some more stuff you can do for the pond as far as clean up and putting more things together at the pond? I mean, kind of, not really. Yeah. Because it, I feel like our association is more so like getting out into the community mm -hmm. and cleaning up the pond. Like the whole point of the association is to clean up the pond um, with trash, with brush, mm -hmm. um, you know, try to manage the geese, yeah. try to kind of get rid of the weeds. That kind of stuff. And so, it really requires like bringing people together. And yeah. so COVID really put us in a hard position mm -hmm. where you couldn't have people together. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it was tough. It was, yeah. Yeah. And, and this year, earlier this year, you, there was a, you guys got recent, recently new barrels over there at the pond. Was that through a grant or was that 
just uh, donations, right? Well, that was raised through donations that, that you guys all put together. Can you talk to us a little about that? Yeah, so, yeah. so we, we had um, money saved up. So Flex Pond Association, you do dues. Mm -hmm. So if you're a member, you pay dues. Um, other things we've done, fundraisers in the past, when we did the trivia, mm -hmm. it technically wasn't a fundraiser, but we ended up getting so many people that yeah. we ended up raising money, which mm -hmm. was nice. Um, so we had money to spend, basically, mm -hmm. and we were trying to figure out what to do with it. And as a, you know, as officers and board members, we decided barrels would be the best option. Mm -hmm. um, and we figured the Flax Pond Park is the most used right now. Yeah. So why not, you know, try to help out the city, try to help out everyone, and you know, donate some barrels. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And that came with the help with the Lynn Park uh, collaboration with Lynn Parks and Recreation or in the DPW, am I correct? Yes. Uh, so, yeah, Lisa and Eric from the DPW has been amazing helping mm -hmm. us. Um, they've been extremely supportive at all the cleanups. Anything we've had to do, they've helped in any way. Mm -hmm. Now, what, what are, you know, for you, know, you guys, recently you had a cleanup already earlier uh, this year. We had a clean up, I didn't go to it, but we had a clean up Saturday. So you had one Saturday. Oh, yeah. We didn't know about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there was a clean up this past Saturday. Yeah. What more clean ups are, are lined up um, as, the, as the year progresses? So right now we don't have any more clean ups lined up mm -hmm. um, just because it's getting towards like the fall mm -hmm. um, and winter time. Yeah. So we try to do the clean ups in like summer, fall. Mm -hmm. um, but our big thing right now is we have um, elections coming up. Yeah. So we're hoping in October, like the end of October, we can get people involved and get elections mm -hmm. um, because some members, you know, some seats are going up, like the president will be up, mm -hmm. you know, possibly the vice president, all that kind of stuff. So we're just trying to get the word out there and trying to get, trying to get people to, you know, be a part of it. And, and I mean, I guess a plug for that could, would be to say, you know, it, it's really not a, a high commitment. You know, mm -hmm. I'm a working mom, I work full time, and then I have this guy plus another little kid, and yeah. I still have the time and availability to do it. It's really flexible. Mm -hmm. So just, you know, I would encourage anyone who thinks they just have even a, a small window um, that it absolutely is manageable. And how, and how often, and how often does the organization meet? Uh, how often during the week or months do you do you all meet? Not that often. So, um, as officers and board members, I try again post pandemic. I tried to do. I mean pre pandemic. I tried to do one time a month. Mm -hmm. Um, just to get officers and board members together so we could talk about cleanups, we could talk about different things. Um, and then the big meeting is just once a year. Mm -hmm. So it really is only like one time a month commitment. Mm -hmm. And then if you do want to, you know, help in the cleanups, um, if we do trivia nights again, stuff like that, it would be like that type of stuff. Yeah. But like Erica said, it's not a huge commitment. Did, was there a movie night at the pond one time before? I think. Did you? There was not no, our pond, goldfish. No, not our pond. I think it was did goldfish. You, did, yeah. But did you? I swear there was. I swear there was a big, some type of big event that happened over there one time. I'm trying to remember. The flex pond. It might. I would say it uh, might have been, but it might have been through like the mayor uh, or something okay, like that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you know what? I think it was the yeah. that summer movie screen oh, that happened yes. a, a couple of years ago. Well, yeah. I think 2019 it happened yeah. that one. Okay. Yeah. See, I was I was You're in close. the bus. <laughs> <laughs> I was close. All right, but okay, can you also talk about some of the other stuff that the organization contributes to the city besides the besides you know keeping the pond clean? Is there? Can you talk, tell people what are some of the other stuff that you guys are that you guys help help around in the city? Um, I mean, for now, I think we're just focused kind of on the pond. Mm -hmm. um, we've talked to other, you know, organizations. If other organizations need help, we mm -hmm. would definitely help out in any way in any way we could. Um, for right now, though, I think we've mostly done like pond cleanups mm -hmm. and that that type of stuff. Have you guys collaborated with the other other associations on things? You know, the you guys in Goldfish Pond collaborate or anything, or would would that be something in the future that you do like? you guys would like to do is collaborate with them? Because I know they got their thing going on and you guys all have your yeah. thing going on. Would that be something that you guys may look into in the future? Yeah, yeah. I mean, any collaboration would be amazing. Mm -hmm. um, best practice, yeah. Share best practices and lessons learned. And I think yeah. always just like bringing community together, whether it's immediate like residents of the pond or people nearby, but then to, to join forces with other associations. <laughs> That further expands um, collaboration between the neighborhoods within the city. Mm -hmm. yep. Definitely. Now for the for the elections, you know, when the, when the, when will the elections happen? And you know, tell me if people are interested, mm -hmm. tell us where they can go to, to you know, 
So we have kind of an informational meeting. So this is going to be, we have never had a Zoom meeting before. Mm -hmm. um, so we're doing an informational Zoom meeting October 5th at 7 o'clock. Um, the link is on Facebook and Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, just to kind of, again, talk a little bit more about the association, what the election is. Um, and then I think we're going to do the election. We're going to hold it October 19th at 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. Again, through Zoom. Um, so if people are interested, if they want to, you know, volunteer for either a board member or an officer position, they can definitely send us a message on Facebook, on Instagram. They could email us, mm -hmm. um, anything like that. But the, definitely the first informational Zoom meeting we have, the, it's up on Facebook and Instagram. And once again, what are the positions that are being up during this, this year's election? So I think everything's kind of up for grabs. Okay. Um, we just want to see if people are going to volunteer. I definitely know presidents up for grabs. Mm -hmm. I know I cannot do it again yeah. next year. I, I, I would love to, but I unfortunately don't live in the city anymore. Oh, okay. And that's one of the requirements. Um, but all of them. So there's president, mm -hmm. there's vice president, there's corresponding secretary, recording secretary, treasurer, and then there's the board. Okay. A lot of, hey, a lot of stuff. A lot of positions open. A lot of, positions, a lot of yeah. positions out there. Uh, and lastly, uh, for those that want to know more about the Goldfish Pond Association, please direct them to where to go, website, social media, all that good stuff. Um, so just on Instagram, Facebook, Flax Pond Association, look us up. We're on both of them. Um, we're on Twitter also. We don't currently have a, a website, but we do have an email, mm -hmm. um, flaxpondassociation at yahoo.com. Then there you have it. Well, thank you all for coming along, Sonny. Thank you for having us. <laughs> thank yeah, you, thank Sonny. You. Great. <laughs> also, thank you, Kevin. He's on the, he's on the, he's, he's over there right he's now. Outside. He, he he's was, on the He was actually our first president. Yeah. He, he started the association, uh, so. There, there you yeah. go. I mean, there's a lot, lot of great organizations exactly. in the city of Lynn, so help. If you want to be involved, make sure you go to their Facebook page, Instagram page, get in contact with them, all that good stuff. Hey, always use a helping hand. Exactly. So you got anything yep. else to say before we get out of here? You have a lot to say, buddy. I think he, I think he said he enjoyed the show. All right. Exactly. You guys have been watching the Lynn Lowdown. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you. Oh, Thank you. You're welcome. And now time for local events from the community calendar. On Saturday from 10 a.m. until noon, the Goldfish Pond Association will be celebrating 41 years with their rolling parade with Marquise de Lafayette. The parade will begin at City Hall and end at Goldfish Pond. On Tuesday, the Lynn Harbor Park will be holding a virtual public meeting beginning at 5 p.m. During this meeting, there will be a discussion about the proposed park project on the Lynn waterfront. This meeting is open to the public. Those interested in participating should visit www.lynnincommon.com forward slash harbor park to register. To find out more about the community calendar, visit lynntv.org. Thank you for watching the LCTV News. Make sure to subscribe to the LCTV Facebook page as well as the LCTV YouTube channel. Also visit lintv.org to watch any show at any time on your computer, phone, or tablet. I'm Kyle Kabongo. Have a great day.